Hello and welcome to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson covers probably one of the most important hand tools there is, the tape measure. We're going to go through the parts, the features of this tool and how to use it accurately. So let's do this. The tape measure is really important. We measure our built space with it while we're working. We measure our materials that we need to mark and cut. We can even decide if something's square with it or even do special processes like layout when we're framing. We're using it constantly. Every tape measure has a case on it. This is a durable shell. They're made of plastic. And in my entire career of building, I've never seen a broken case super durable. It's to protect the parts inside that aren't quite as durable. The tape is a thin steel blade, you might hear it called a blade, that retracts into the case. It's spring-loaded and it uh, comes in different lengths. This is a 16-foot tape measure. You might see another common one is a 25-foot or you might even see a 30-foot. These are all available. It depends on what kind of work you're doing and how long the measurements are. The tape has a curve to it along its width. So you can see that here. The wider the tape, the more curve it has. What this does for it is it makes it stiff. It allows it to stay straight as we extend it out. We'll call that our standout, and different tapes have different lengths of standouts. That helps us work with it as a solo tool. Every tape measure has a blade lock, and there's a couple of different styles of blade locks. This feature makes the tape, which is spring-loaded, stay out or lock it in an, in an extended position. This one is always off until I flip this button. And when I flip this button, it's going to lock it out. It'll stay out. This one is different. It's called a lever lock. The button is basically a brake. It's always on. So if I want to pull the tape out or extend it out, I have to push this lock in. Now I can pull the blade out. If I release it, it will hold the tape out or extend it. When you're working with a tape measure, just make sure you retract it under control. It can come in kind of quick and it can cut your hand or cause damage to the tape measure. Every tape has a hook at the end of the blade. This is our zero or our start point for all of our measurements. And there are three rivets on this one that hold the hook onto the blade. This is our precision end of this tool. If it gets abused or bent, the tape measure is no good. And honestly, it's kind of surprising, but the end moves just a little bit. It's going to slide back and forth so that we keep that true zero, depending on whether we're pushing it into something or pulling it away from an edge. So if you have a tape and it has a little bit of movement in this hook, that's good. If it doesn't have movement in the hook, you will not have an accurate tape measure. This is a tool you need with you at a moment's notice. It's no good to you if it's laying on the ground somewhere where you can't get to it. It's a good thing they make a feature for this tool called a belt clip. This is a spring steel clip that will fasten to your belt and it makes it very available to you at any moment. If this tool is not in your hand, it should be on your belt, in your bag, or in your toolbox at the end of the day. You need to be very versatile when you're using a tape measure. I'm a right-handed person. I like or prefer to pull my measurements with my right hand. It's much more comfortable. This also sets up my tape measure as a right-handed person. Uh, you're looking at these numbers upside down, but as I'm viewing them, they're right side up. They're really easy to read. The problem with that is, is that if I need to make a mark, say on a piece of material, now I'm making a mark with my left hand. That just doesn't work, especially when we're trying to be accurate. So that means that, that I also need to be able to use this tool with my left hand and do the same motions, same techniques, pull it with my left hand. Now it frees up my right hand, my dominant hand to make my marks. The problem with reading the tape measure is when I'm using it with my left hand, now the numbers are upside down for me. You're looking at them right side up, but this is uh, one of those things about a tape measure you just have to get used to and you just have to be able to interpret those numbers upside down, take a little more time and focus on it. Unless, of course, if you're left-handed, a left-handed person would do it this way and congratulations, this is the first tool made for you as a left-handed person. When taking measurements, it's really important to extend the tape past the edge that you're working with. 
this edge is the one I'm measuring to, and it reads at a little more than 19 inches for me. If this case is too close to that edge, it's really hiding what's going on here. I could be off as much as a 16th if I don't extend that tape out. If you wanna be super accurate with your tape measure, it's important to roll it. Remember we talked about the tape and how it's curved. What you want is whatever edge you're trying to read to be rolled over and touching the surface that you're trying to measure or mark. This way I have full contact with the mark straight to the surface. It makes it a lot easier to make a mark and keep it accurate. If this was rolled up this way, it creates a shadow and my lines and reference gets really vague. So we've laid our tape, we've rolled the edge flat to the surface. Now we need to read the measurement. I need to cite these marks and these numbers and this is a really important moment in this measurement. I need to be directly over top of that measurement to cite it accurately. If I'm over here to, to this side, that measurement could read short. It reads about a 16th shy of 19 inches. If I read it from this side over here, it can be as long as a 16th too far. So that's 19 and 1 16th. So reading it from directly uh, above it or straight head on to it is the best way to cite a measurement. Accurate measurements with a tape measure depend on us holding or setting that tape up straight. What I mean by straight is not angled. This is a rectangle. This works with rectangles and squares. We can use certain edges and be parallel to them for reference to create the most accurate setup for a tape measure. If I'm crooked or askew, my measurement grows. I'm up to 19 and a quarter inches there. If I straighten it out, it shortens to 19 inches. And if I'm crooked this way as well, it can get longer that way too. So what you need is you need an edge for reference. In this case, I've got a, an edge here. I can straighten out my tape to it and feel pretty confident that this is going to be an accurate measurement. If you're struggling with finding or citing that parallel condition, what you can do is swing your tape measure back and forth. If you have a rectangle or a square that you're measuring, the shortest measurement will be the accurate one. All of our measurements fall into two categories. That's a pull measurement and a push measurement. So a pull measurement is when we take this hook, we find a hard edge, we place that hook on that hard edge, and we put tension on the tape. What happens, uh, we talked about that hook moves a little bit, uh, depending on what kind of measurement you're making. So when we do a pull measurement, you can see how it shifts. And what that does is it places the zero point on the inside of our hook. So what's happening here is the distance that this hook is moving is literally the thickness of this hook. So the zero could be either on the outside or on the inside. And depending on whether we're pushing or pulling it changes where that zero point is. So make sure while you're doing a pull measurement, you're always keeping that tension on this hook so that it's the most accurate measurement possible. When we're doing a push measurement, we're using the standout or stiffness of the blade and we're pushing that hook into a hard edge. You can see that movement right here. We need to add pressure to the tape to force that hook into this position. That puts our zero point on the outside of our hook here. So a push measurement would start with extending our tape. We'll push the hook into a hard edge and then we're going to extend that tape out to an edge where we can then sight it and read it. This measurement is dead on at 25 and 3 eighths. You might find yourself trying to measure in between two inside corners. You'll start this measurement off with a push measurement into one corner, and then you'll do a bend of the tape to sight the other corner. Let me show you how that works. So I will push this tape into one corner over here. I'll extend it out and with tension on the tape, I'm pushing this tape into this corner as tightly as I can get it without breaking or crimping this tape measure. The better you get at this, the more accurate you can be. This is not the most accurate way to measure, but it is a good start. And I'm reading this at about 43 and a quarter inches. A more accurate version of this inside corner to inside corner measurement would be to take two push measurements. If I push from this edge over, I can find a number that uh, I can remember. That would be, I like tens, so I would choose 40 inches here. I'll make a mark at 40 inches. 
And then I can use another push measurement from the other corner into that mark. So whatever that measurement is, and I've got three and three eighths. So I'll take the first measurement of 40 inches and add that three and three eighths to it for a total of 43 and three eighths inches. This is as accurate as it gets when we're talking about those inside corner to inside corner measurements. We can use this push and bend method on a lot of our vertical measurements without even using a ladder. So if we take our tape and we extend out extra, we can push it into the floor and we can move that tape using the standout up and down. And I can extend this tape all the way up to the ceiling if I want to for this floor to ceiling measurement, which is basically two inside corners. You can also measure with a tape measure and not use the hook. It's called burning an inch. That's shifting the tape measure over one inch and using the one inch line as your start point for your measurement. I'll measure from this edge here over to this line here. I'll shift the tape over to one inch and my mark falls on four inches. I'll subtract that inch that I've shifted this tape measure over for a total measurement here of three inches. You can do this method for a couple of other reasons too. You might not have an edge to hook the tape onto. If I measure from this line over to this line, I can burn that inch as well, shift it over, and then it reads at eight inches. So when I subtract this inch that I've shifted it, that is a seven inch measurement from here over to here. You can also use this method to test your tape measure to see how accurate the hook is. So if I pull this measurement with my hook from this edge to this line, it reads three inches. If I do my burning an inch and shift it over to one inch, it reads four inches. What that tells me is that the distance between the inside of this hook and this three inch mark is the same exact distance from my one inch to my four inch mark. That means that the hook is perfectly accurate. This is not just some crazy classroom exercise I'm talking about here. Tape measures wear over time. The hook can shift, it can get bent. I drop my tape measure all the time. The case might not break, but this is a very fragile part of the tape measure. So you should be checking your tape daily to make sure that it's accurate before you start building anything. So proper measurements expect that we're not babysitting the hook. That means I'm not watching or standing here at the hook when I'm using it. What can happen though in that case is when it gets hooked into something, it might get stuck. And a hook trap or when the hook gets stuck is a great opportunity to ruin a tape measure. So if you get to a point to where your hook is stuck in a place where you can't get it out, don't pull on the tape, come back to this hook and then remove it so it stays intact. So we call this the blade on the tape measure and we call it that for a reason. This edge on either side of this tape measure is pretty sharp and when this tape measure is retracting back into the case or even if you're pulling it out too fast, if your fingers are in the way, you can really cause a nasty cut. So whenever you're retracting the blade or extending it, make sure that your fingers are not anywhere near the edges of those blades. So we talked about the bending of the blade and that you can bend it to a certain point. If this blade gets too bent, it will crimp or fold. Those crimps or folds turn into bad places on the blade or nicks in the edges. Those become even sharper than the edge of the blade. So that safety aspect of keeping your fingers out of the way is even more important. So that's a lot of good information about a very important hand tool, a precision hand tool that you need to know to build well. So remember, keep it by your side if it's not in your hand. If it's not in those two places, keep it stored with your other tools. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.